Hey everybody, and we're back. So we are going to talk about the different types of circuits that you might come across and the characteristics of each. So I uh, will go ahead and screen share again for you. And here is our type of circuits. So we have a basic simple circuit and I'm actually going to take screen share off here in a moment. But if you were taking notes, I uh, just want to throw it up there for you. Uh, we're going to talk about a simple circuit, <coughs> excuse me, and um, series circuits, parallel circuits, what we won't talk that much about, but I want to, I'll, I'll draw it for you and just sort of real briefly explain is your series parallel circuits. Those are a little bit more complicated. Um, so a lot of the basic principles apply. I'm not going to get into the math of them at all because I'm going to leave that for an electrical class. I feel it's uh, uh, more appropriate for a 54 class. So um, I am going to draw each of these and just talk a little bit about the characteristics here. But we got simple series uh, parallel and then our series parallel. So let me stop share here and I will draw them for you. Uh, so really quick, I actually forgot on the last uh, video, at the end of the last video, I drew a uh, symbol for your power source. And I am super silly when I went to erase it, I realized that I, I misdrew it. Not that it's a big deal. Uh, once in a while, you'll see a symbol for a power source here. And it looks like this. You can always tell um, just because there are three uh, little lines and three big lines. I'll talk a little bit in a few slides about um, what each of those lines represent, but I drew the symbol incorrectly for you, so I wanted to rectify that. Um, but that's a symbol for your power source. Uh, just throwing it out there. All right, now let's talk about the different types of circuits. So the very first one, I'm just going to use green for this one, is going to be called a simple circuit. Um, and a simple circuit has, any circuit has to have a power source, needs to have a power path, and then uh, two of the optional things um, I just drew in here were our fuse and our switch. Um, the switch can either be open right now, you can see that the little line is closed, um, but it's it's just a symbol for toggle switch, a simple SPST switch. So um, I'm going to leave that up to the rest of the circuits. But for a simple circuit, it only has one load. And I may not have mentioned just the term electrical load it means that we have a purposeful reason for something to take up or do work. So in a, uh, in a circuit that uh, has, is a light bulb circuit, the load is the light bulb. If it's turning an electric motor, the load is the electric motor. So in this case, I'm just going to use uh, light bulbs for the simple just uh, to explain things. Um, so for all these circuits, I'm going to make them light bulb circuits. But I just wanted to explain. A simple circuit in any respect is going to have one load. That's it. So if it's one load and we're doing a light circuit, it's simply going to have one light bulb. So from our fuse and switch, we have a insulated wire going to our light bulb and then uh, from our light bulb down to ground, right? We already talked about ground in the last video. So that's a simple circuit. If it was one motor, it would be the same. It's a simple circuit. Uh, just a couple quick characteristics of a simple circuit. Amperage is the same throughout the entire circuit. Whatever amperage I have coming out of my battery is going to travel through the light bulb and back to ground, back to the battery. Um, whatever it is that our load is doing has to drop or use up all of the voltage before it's done. So if I am uh, probably for the rest of this section here, we're going to go ahead and call our battery a 12 volt battery. Now, if you want to get silly into things, um, it's actually a 12.6 volt battery, and that has to do with the amount of cells producing 2.1 volts each. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, and a charging voltage on a vehicle is actually, you know, in between 14-ish to 15-ish something volts, right? Um, we're not going to get into that. Just for the sake of math and making things easy, uh, I, I want to talk about our power source as being a 12 volt power source. 
So that is our 12 volt power source, um, meaning that we have 12 volts of pressure going into our load once we turn our circuit on. If that's the case, physics says that I cannot have any pressure coming back to the battery. I can have amperage, I can have current flow, but I cannot have pressure coming back to the battery. So going in to make my light bulb light up, I should have 12 volts traveling from my power source through my fuse, not doing any work. My switch, again, not doing any work, so it's not gonna use up any voltage. Going into my electrical load, the electrical load is actually doing work. In this case, it is lighting a light bulb, so it's going to use up some of that voltage, uh, all of the voltage in this case. And then I have nothing after going straight back to my battery, right, because it's ground, so that means that those are connected through the vehicle's uh, body, frame, and engine block from the last video, right? Um, that is a simple circuit, meaning that I can't have any voltage coming out. So if my light bulb is doing work, if it's actually doing something, I'm going to have zero volts coming out of the other side. I can't have any pressure coming back to the battery. If I do, it's going to use it up. It's, it's going to heat up. It's going to do something. But if I have any electrical load in that circuit, that one load is going to use up everything. So that's a simple circuit. And those are just some characteristics of a simple circuit. The next type of circuit, uh, if you remember, and I should not have erased some of my switch there. Let me fix that. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Two contacts and something that it, it's a toggle. And that's a horrible. You guys can't see on the camera. <laughs> Let me redraw that. Sorry. All right. I've got two contacts in my switch something that's encasing the switch. And in this case right now, um, I'm gonna have a little toggle that can go up and down. A series circuit, let me change the name here. <clears throat> you guys will have to forgive me in the future. I will learn how to edit videos, but just because for the sake of time, we're just trying to get stuff up on here. So no editing. Uh, the next type of circuit is a series circuit. A series circuit means that something happens in a series. If you're watching a television show and you're watching the entire series, it's many episodes, right, in a row. That's a series circuit meaning I have loads in a row. I've got multiple loads. So a series circuit is always going to have more than one load in the event just for the sake of space. I'm only going to drop two loads. Um, but a series circuit means that I only have one path through these loads. So let's say I've got two light bulbs before I go to ground instead. Very similar to our last circuit, except for now there are two of the light bulbs. I did not mean to draw them in different sizes. That doesn't matter. But um, <clears throat> that's something in a series. So if you want to hear, just think of that term, series. Uh, it should tell you exactly how that circuit is set up. There are some, uh, but very little series in automotive. I'm going to talk about them because it still applies, um, especially when you get into series parallel. So I just want to give you a good base on how that sort of works and how they work. So I will talk about series circuits here uh, briefly before I get into parallel circuits. So I'm going to go back to screen sharing. And here we, and away we go. Um, let's talk about, oops. Series circuits. Oh, and I completely forgot. A couple of terms I will mention. Uh, TCA is going to be total circuit amperage, um, meaning the entire amount of amperage in that entire circuit from beginning to end. Uh, total circuit resistance is going to be TCR, uh, meaning the amount of resistance in the entire circuit with all the loads. And then voltage drop is the amount of voltage being used up in a particular area. And source voltage is obviously coming from our power source. So that is source voltage. Let's talk about series circuits. So um, current only has one path from power to ground. So if you look at the picture here, as well as the picture I drew, the picture here doesn't use ground. It just goes straight from positive to negative. 
So coming out of our positive, going into bold one, going into bold two, going into bold three, and then back to ground. It's forcing current to flow through every single bulb or load in the circuit. That's a series circuit. Um, current, and, and this last bullet here, it goes for every circuit. So put a star next to it, write it down in your notes, whatever it is that you're doing. Current must flow in order for voltage to drop. And that is so important to know because if I don't have continuity, again, I can't have work being done. Therefore, voltage will not drop. And I know right now that doesn't make any sense, but when I draw it up on the board, um, I will show you how this applies. So if I have a break in the circuit anywhere in a series circuit, anywhere in the circuit, beginning, end, I don't have continuity. If I don't have current continuity, I don't have current flow, which means I don't have any voltage drop, meaning that no voltage can be used up in the circuit. And uh, hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense when I draw it up on the board here. But those are some characteristics. I like to think of these as like levels to a video game. Um, I think that there are, it's the same platform. It's just different rules, right? So like in the level of series circuits, this is, this, these are the rules of the game. This is uh, how it's going to react when you do something to it. Um, these are the characteristics. Uh, the rules to this level or series circuit are as follows. So first thing you need to know is that no matter what, current remains the same, meaning the amount of amperage remains the same. Coming out of the power source all the way back to the power source, it remains the same. And anywhere in between, it remains the same. That's not the same for parallel circuits. Uh, the same amount of current coming out does still come back to the to the power source. However, in a parallel circuit, it gets split up in between and then it sort of comes back. I'll explain that in a few. But in a series circuit, current remains the same or amperage flow remains the same no matter where in the circuit. Total circuit resistance TCR, and I know this is labeled a little bit weird, but is the sum of all resistors. So if you remember from math class, the sum is adding everything up, right? So all of my resistors in the circuit, no matter if it's one, no, sorry, not one, because that's simple circuit, uh, but that's sort of the same for a simple circuit. Um, total circuit resistance is the sum of whatever resistors in there. Um, TCR on a series circuit is the added up amount or the sum of all of the resistors in the circuit, whether there's two or 100 or whether there's one ohm or a million ohms, uh, total circuit resistance of the entire circuit is all of them. Total voltage drop of, so the amount of voltage that drops across whether it's two resistors or whether it's 100 resistors must equal source voltage. What that means, and I'll explain here in a moment on the whiteboard, is that if I have two resistors, uh, or whether I have a hundred resistors, my power voltage, my power source voltage, whatever is coming out of the battery. So let's say I've got 12 volts coming out of the battery. It's going to get spread across however many resistors there are. If there's only two resistors and that 12 volts only gets split up two different ways. If it's across a hundred different resistors, that 12 volts gets spread up across a hundred different resistors. And that makes a big difference on things. So let me go ahead and just show a few examples on how to solve for some of these things. Um, I really feel like it's taking so much longer doing this on video than it would be a lecture uh, in person, but um, just bear with me. All right, so back to our whiteboard. In a series circuit, I, let me use another color that hopefully stands out a little bit more. Um, let's say, again, we've got two resistors, but let's put numbers on these resistors because remember we talked about Ohm's law and all that good stuff in the previous videos, uh, electrical lecture, video one and video two. Um, let's put some numbers to these. Let's say that, uh, let's, let's make things pretty easy here. Let's just go ahead and say 
resistor number one or bulb number one is one ohm. That's a horrible. I'm looking in the video of our baby octopus. All right, this looks a little bit better. Uh, and let's say the second bulb is also only one ohm. A couple of terms we need to go back and remember. TCR was total circuit resistance, right? TCA was total circuit average, right? Now, <coughs> there's gonna be a couple other things we're gonna solve for in a few. Um, one of them is going to be, I'll do this in another color here. We'll call it V1 and V2. And that is going to be the amount of voltage that gets used up across bulb number one. And then V2 is the amount of voltage that gets used up across bulb two. Well, we remember on the last few slides that the amount that gets used up here and here together needs to equal source voltage, right? I'm not allowed to have any pressure come back to the battery, so no matter what, it has to get used up. And since I only have two loads in my circuit, purposefully, each one of these, that 12 volts is gonna get distributed across. Now, if you might be thinking, well, each amount of resistance is the same, one ohm and one ohm. Therefore, this must get distributed equally. And I would say to you, you are correct. Uh, but let's get to why, and let me show you guys mathematically how that sort of works. So for those of you who may not have come to that conclusion, you can understand why. So first thing, I want to just in the corner here draw little Ohm's Law pie chart, right? Because we're gonna use that a ton right now. I'll use another color just for uh, visual here. So <clears throat> right now, we need to figure out how much resistance is in this entire circuit. Well, it's really easy because TCR, total circuit resistance, is the sum of all resistors. Well, we know that the sum of one ohm and one ohm is two ohms, right? So right now, we, I already gave you guys what source voltage is. Source voltage is 12 volts. And remember that goes up on the top from our first video. And if we're looking at a total circuit resistance, well, we know that one ohm plus one ohm is two ohms. So that is our TCR, right? Total circuit resistance or the resistance for the entire circuit. Well, if I want to figure out my third, that's pretty easy. So if I know TCR for the whole circuit and I want to know amperage, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. We've got two ohms here. If I know the source voltage, I know the resistance for the whole circuit, I can figure out mathematically very easily how much amperage I have for the whole circuit. Two, or I'm sorry, 12 divided by two is going to give us a total of six amps of current going through the whole circuit. So that is going to be our TCA. So if I had a circuit and I wanted to figure that out, all I need to know is the resistance of the bulbs I put in the circuit, my source voltage, and I would know exactly how much amperage I have coming through the entire circuit. So uh, not super hard to figure out. Um, you may need to go through that a couple of times before uh, if that's something that uh, is a little too complicated for you. So that is how we figure those out. Now, there's one more thing we didn't talk about, and that's what voltage drop one and voltage drop two is going to be. So I'm going to take some of the space away here. Um, up here at the top, we had a TCR, just as a reminder, of two ohms. And then we figured out how much amperage we have inserted. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up here, just so we don't forget, right? Down here, we had, I'll do it in the correct color here. We had to figure out the voltage drop for V1 and V2. How much voltage is getting used across V1? How much is getting used across V2? And, <clears throat> excuse me, if we look at that, I need to do a separate Ohm's Law pie chart for each one. And here's why. All right, so a lot of times you're trying to do it, you, you're like, I know how to fill this out. I've got source voltage, uh, I know the resistance. Wait a minute. Before you do anything silly, 
you need to ask yourself where you are trying to figure out or what you're trying to figure out. So, well, I figured out resistance for the whole circuit. Okay, I figured out amperage for the whole circuit. Okay, now V1 is the voltage drop, not for the whole circuit, but just for this one bowl. So what am I looking for? Well, V1, it's voltage drop. So to keep myself from doing anything silly, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little question mark up in the V. That way I know, I, okay, I can't accidentally put 12, right? Because that's the most common mistake I see in class. So as long as I know I'm looking for voltage, well, then I must have my other two numbers. So, well, that's cool. I already figured out my TCR is two ohms. Uh-uh-uh, not quite. Because we're not looking for voltage drop of the entire total circuit, right? I'm looking for voltage drop of just the one volt. Well, how much resistance do I have of just the one volt? One ohm. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, sorry, wrong category, one ohm. I did mention though that in a series circuit, that amperage remains the same throughout the entire circuit. I did not, right? So uh, right up here, we already figured that out. Since I know that I've got six amps running through the entire circuit, and if you don't remember how we got six amps, back the video up a little bit, and I will show you. Uh, if I know that I've got six amps in the entire circuit, that means I got six amps here. That means I got six amps here. That means I got six amps even after everything's all said and done. So I've got six amps everywhere. I've got one ohm and I know I've got six amps everywhere in the circuit. Well, that's easy peasy. I know that this is a multiplication line, right? So I take my six amps, I multiply it by my one ohm. So I know that the amount of voltage being dropped across this one volt is going to be six. Volts. That looks horrible from my screen to your camera. But we know that that's going to be six volts. Now I could do the math again, but we already know because we already did it since the resistance value is exactly the same. We do know that we're looking for voltage. We do know that in this one bulb, I've got one ohm. And across this whole entire circuit, I've got six amps. So across my V2, same math, six times one is gonna give me six volts. Now here's another cool thing you can do. I'm gonna erase this over here. I can double check my math. Did I do this correctly? Well, I do know that the amount of voltage dropped across the entire circuit must equal source voltage, right? So, well, all I have to do is add them up. Does six volts plus six volts equal my source voltage, which is 12 volts? I think yes. So that is how you would figure out your total circuit resistance, your total circuit amperage, as well as your voltage drop across each load in your circuit. I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know that you're never gonna use this. As a technician, I'm sorry to make you sit through that, but um, here's why you need to know. You need to know how to use this because if you ever find yourself uh, designing a circuit or um, building a new circuit, or maybe you're trying to diagnose something that uh, is custom and you don't know. Uh, you don't have a wiring diagram, you don't have any specifications. Knowing how this works sets you apart from anybody else. So this is very useful kind of niche knowledge. If you work at a dealership, you're never gonna need to use this, but um, you never know where you might end up. So uh, this is why we're going over this. So that is how you figure out series circuits. I'll go ahead and do one more for you just so we can uh, understand totally. I would like to do something for you here. <clears throat> I'm gonna draw a circuit, and I know you guys are doing this at home, so this is really about how much you plan on getting out of this class. I'm gonna draw a couple new numbers up here, and I'm gonna ask that once I do that, that you pause the video, 
and you try to figure it out on your own. When you think you've done it, then go ahead and watch the rest of the video. But uh, try to do this. It, it really will help you out uh, quite a bit more than you think. So let's say, instead I'm gonna make it a little bit harder on you. Let's say I've got one two ohm bulb and I've got one four ohm bulb, okay? I would like you to tell me what the TCR of this circuit is, what the TCA, oh, I'm sorry, it's not tell me, but uh, figure it out on your own. Uh, I'd like you to tell me what V1 is, voltage drop one and voltage drop two. is okay figure that out so right now go ahead and pause the video um because in a few seconds here i'm going to erase this and i'm going to show you how to do it um but you're not going to get as much out of it nearly as if you would have uh, just tried to figure it out so take a moment pause the video and uh figure out how how you're going to get tcr tca v1 and v2 and compare it to the answer that i give you here in a few moments <clears throat> All right, hopefully you paused the video and now I'm going to help you figure out how to find these values. So if we're looking for TCR, I know all I need to do is add these up, right? So we've got four plus two. That's going to give me a total of six ohms of resistance. Well, since I already know my source voltage and I know my resistance, I know I can use handy dandy ohms law pie charts. So if I use my ohms law pie chart, I know I've got 12 volts for the whole circuit. And now I've figured out that I've got six ohms of resistance for the entire circuit. I now can calculate how much amperage I have through the whole circuit as well. So 12 divided by six lets me know that I have two amps going through that circuit. So hopefully that's easy enough. Um, if I go through and I wanna figure out my voltage drop for each one, I'm gonna go ahead and use another color here. And if I'm looking for V1, I know I need to make a separate Ohm's Law pie chart for this one, don't forget. And I need to make sure I ask myself, anytime I use Ohm's Law pie chart, really, what am I looking for? That way I don't accidentally put a value in a place I think it belongs. So figure out what you're searching for first. I know that for V1, I am looking for voltage, right? So if I know I'm looking for voltage, that means I need a value for amperage and ohms. And again, I'm not searching for the resistance for the entire circuit, so I just want the ohms of the voltage drop that I'm looking for. In this case, it's two ohms, right? I also know that in a series circuit, amperage remains the same throughout the entire circuit. It never changes, right? It never changes. So uh, my TCA that I have already calculated is two amps. Well, basic math tells me that two times two, because it's a multiplication line, is gonna give me four volts across my first volt. If we wanna figure out voltage drop number two, I need to change my values, obviously. Well, do I? <laughs> my amps, I know, is the same throughout the entire circuit, so I could probably just keep amps, right? But I do know that the resistance between uh, the bolts are different. In this case, it happens to be four ohms of resistance on my second bolt. So I can go ahead and put four there now. Instead, I've got four times two amps. Four ohms times two amps is going to give me an eight volt drop across my second bolt. Now again, if I want to double check my answers, all I need to do is add up my voltage drop values and compare it to my source voltage. In this case, I know that eight times four, or sorry, eight plus four is going to give me 12 volts, which is my source voltage. I am throwing in numbers here that are way easier than real life. Real life is gonna give you some decimal points. Um, in this case, I'm not 
really worried about, I, I want you to understand the concept. So uh, that's where we're going here with that. Um, this is how you figure out a series circuit. Now, I want you to notice on the last circuit where our total circuit resistance was only two, because it was one volt plus one volt. Uh, my amperage was uh, higher, right? So it was 12 divided by two, and that's how we got our amperage. So we had six amps in the last circuit. The difference between our last circuit is that we have a higher total circuit resistance. So remember that teeter-totter? The higher the resistance, the less my amperage is gonna be. I have higher resistance, and I went from uh, two amp, or sorry, two ohms to six ohms, right? Well, that took me from six amps to two amps. So that's how real life does work. If I increase uh, the amount of resistance in a circuit, in a series, series circuit, I will decrease the amount of amperage in that circuit. And if you guys remember from Auto 50, um, when we built those circuits, the light bulbs, as we added them more in series, adding more resistance in series, we saw them got dimmer. And part of that was because our amperage was dropping because of all the resistance. So if you're building a circuit, that's something to think about. Um, be careful on how you're building it. So that is a series circuit. I want to talk briefly about parallel circuits. I'm going to go, um, I'm actually probably going to start another video. So we'll go ahead and stop recording here. And next video, I'll show you parallel circuits.